Okay, so I'm about to do an oil change on my 2018 Goldwing. And as you can see, I've got this traction engine guard installed. We have three of those four millimeter uh, bolts we have to remove. And then we have four in the front that we have to remove. The problem is when you remove this, if I remove the three bolts back here first, this plate is going to want to drop down and it's going to put stress on those other four bolts. Now you could, I suppose, hold it with your hand as you loosen the other bolts and try to do it, but it's a little clumsy. And also these four or these three or seven total screws or bolts are going into aluminum. So the threads are aluminum. And I just don't want to create any stress or strain on those threads by letting part of this plate hang down and create a problem with, you know, the weight of that plate, putting all that stress on those four front bolts or in reverse, if I removed the four front bolts and be putting the stress and strain on these three rear bolts. So what I have is how can I kind of keep this plate in place as I loosen all of these bolts rather than letting it want to just fall down? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my big red, my Torin big red jack that I use for the bike. And I'm going to put it kind of in the middle of that plate in the center as much as I can. And I'm just going to twist it with my hand, I'm not even using the little jack wrench because I don't need to raise the bike up. I'm just going to put this up here until it touches the bottom of that plate. Okay, so I'm just going to raise this up until it's just barely touching that plate, like right there, it's touching the plate. And now my objective is I can go ahead and loosen all my bolts. I don't have to worry about using two hands. And hopefully this jack will just hold that plate suspended up underneath the bike. And then once I have all the bolts out, I can lower the jack down, take the plate out, no problem. And, and it should work in reverse as well. So that's the goal. That's what I'm going to try to do. And by doing it this way, I don't have to worry about removing some in the front, some in the back. Because I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to worry about this plate falling down, or at least that's the hope. Okay, and you can see it kept that plate from falling down. So now I can go take out my front bolts. You'll notice I'm taking these out kind of in a, a pattern. I'm not trying to take one out at a time. I want to loosen it so that those that plate doesn't drop down on one end and put the other screws into a little bit of a bind. Shouldn't be a problem, but, you know, why not? Now, it's a little bit of a hassle having to take this plate off and on each time you do an oil change, but it's well worth the protection. And some of you may have the wing stuff belly pan, and, it, you know, it may be a little bit easier to get off and on, but... Either way, I think they're both good. See, and now my plate didn't fall down. This is what we have. No, no bolts now holding the plate on, but the jack is holding that plate sort of in place. 
So now I'm going to kind of keep my hand on this plate as I lower that jack. I'm just turning this with my hand to lower it down. And once I get it down a quarter of an inch, I can just pull the plate out. Plate is out now. That was much easier. And then I can just lower my jack. I'll use it later when I go to put the plate back on. I'll show you that as well. Now that I have the traction engine guard out of the way, I can continue with my normal procedure for doing an oil and filter change. Now, I'm not going to cover all of this in this video. If you want details on all the steps necessary to do an oil, a filter change, and a DCT filter change, check out my Honda Goldwing maintenance series. I'll put links in the description of this video, and that is covered in great detail. I know that an oil change right now costs about $200 at a dealership, and you can save a ton of money by doing these things yourself. Here you can see I've removed that rear drain plug, even though I do have that traction bracket in place, and that's because I ground off a little bit of the material from that bracket, and I think Traction is now shipping a modified bracket. I got one of the earlier models that kind of blocked that drain plug from coming out. But you can see that silver part, that's where I have actually ground off on a bench grinder some of the material so that that drain plug and crush washer can come out much easier. Also on this oil change, I'm going to be testing out this Castrol GTX Synthetic. Uh, a lot of you have been asking me about synthetic oils and alternatives to the Honda oil. So I'm going to try this out for a few thousand miles and see how it works. And I will report back to you. I don't suspect there will be any issues. That might be of interest to those of you either that have the traction engine guard or considering it. I looked underneath after I pulled this off and I see no oil. Uh, some of you were concerned about possible seepage or oil leakage, and there's absolutely no indication of any oil. So that issue that I had the first time I installed this uh, probably is because I left those bolts out too long, and it allowed some oil to seep out, but there's been none. And I've probably driven a 1,000 miles with this over the last maybe three or four weeks, and uh, it looks good to go. So that's good news traction plate ready to go back on. I've got my, my little jack sitting here, kind of centered under the engine. And I'm just going to try to line these things up. I'm going to start jacking it up now, turning that little handle. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it right now. Once I get it up a little higher, I'll put a couple of screws in. See where I am right there. Okay, like that, and then I can kind of manipulate it just a little. I see it's up a little farther up, but right there, I think, is where my hole is. Okay, that one is started. This is so much easier than trying to hold that plate up. I'm just turning in maybe three or four threads. I'm not going to go much farther. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and get all four of these in, but I'm going to leave them loose enough so I can get my rear screws lined up. These should go pretty easy right here. Just like that. And put a couple of threads in there. Okay, so you can see. It's still loose. Now let's go to the back and get the rear screws in. I have more trouble with these rear threads than I do on the front. They just seem to be, I don't know, they just, they, they go in much tighter, I've noticed. So I'm not sure if that is a manufacturing thing or it's just maybe the way I have it lined up. Seems like Max put out a video on something you can do to prevent that from happening on at least one of these rear screws. And I can't remember now what it was. 
So you might want to go check out Max McAllister's video on traction dynamics. Now I'm going to go ahead and go up a little more on these, tighten these down a little bit more. I'm not going to completely tighten them, but I'm going to go ahead and get them up there, and I'm going to raise my jack up a little just to kind of push everything up from the bottom like that. And I'm just hand tightening right now. And one thing you want to be careful with these screws, you do not want to over tighten them. I don't have the torque specs. I don't even know if traction has torque specs on these. But you're screwing into a, an aluminum bracket up here. And uh, it's not a good idea to over tighten or you could strip something out. Plus, the head on these little screws can strip out pretty easily, too, if you don't have a good uh, Allen wrench. So be careful that you don't start camming out and boogering up those uh, head of those, those Allen bolts. Okay, let's go back to the front. Okay, now these feel a little bit tighter. This, uh, this, this engine guard is a pretty tight fit. So I think this jack idea, using the jack, really, really makes a big difference. It really helps when you're trying to get this thing lined up correctly. And again, I'm tightening along this row. I'm not tightening any one all the way down first. I want to tighten them kind of in a, I, you can't say a cross pattern because they don't crisscross. Okay, I think I've got these to where I can go ahead and do my final tightening and then I'll go back to the back screws and tighten those up one more time. I'm not going to over tighten, I'm just hand tightening these. I want them firm, but I don't want to risk stripping out any of those threads. And I don't think Max recommends using any kind of thread lock on these, so don't do it if he doesn't say to. Okay. Okay, so the front is done. And I get a little better feel for my tightening without it. Okay. Feels good. Get this one tightened up. This is the one that I seem to have the most trouble with. It just seems to go in tighter. You can hear it making that sound when I tighten it. But I think it's okay. It just doesn't feel like it's going in as far as the other ones. Are you getting that on yours? This is the left rear. So it'll hold. I'm not worried about holding. It just doesn't sound smooth and and crisp. So if any of you, all my other other six bolts are fine. It's just that one that I seem to have an issue with. It's the left rear, and it, maybe this is the one that Max said he he made a modification or he offers some hack to modify that. Maybe you have to put a washer up there or something. I'll have to read up on that. Now I'm using this trouble light. Uh, that was sent to me. I'll put the name of the company and a link to it online on Amazon. And I've been kind of laying it on the ground. You can see I got oil all over it. It's got a USB, uh, micro USB charging port, and it's also got just a regular USB where you could use the battery in this to, say, charge a cell phone or something, an emergency. Uh, this is a, a COB or COB LED which is, I think, stands for circuit on board. And it's really good just to lay on the ground when I'm working. I can see up under the engine pretty easily with it. Uh, it doesn't work great with uh, on video because it gives you that little flash sometimes. But it has a couple of different, this is just a little flashlight on the end with two different power settings. And then you have like an emergency flasher and of course, then it turns off. To turn it on the first time, you get the high power, really super bright, really almost too bright, unless you're working under the hood of a car, underneath a car. 
um, for the gold wing working underneath it, I just put it down here to the low setting. And I think it goes like eight hours, the battery life, at this low setting. I'm not sure. It's six or eight hours. It goes forever. And then if you use this little flashlight here, I believe it goes for, I don't know, eight or ten hours. It's a long time. So you might want to check. If you're looking for a trouble light, it's actually maybe better suited for automotive use than it is for a motorcycle. It does have a magnet on the back here so that you could um, stick it to a surface like that. It's probably heavy enough it might fall off just stuck to that. But if it's underneath, say, the hood of your car, you could stick it as a pretty, pretty uh, strong magnet. I wish it had a magnet on the base, but it doesn't. But it does have this magnet on the back. Also has a hook that you can flip out and hang it, say, on the underside of your hood of your car. Um, you can hang it, you know, so that you use it just like a, tr you know, traditional trouble light. But uh, it is rechargeable. Um, I assume it's lithium ion. And uh, I did notice I got some oil down here uh, on near that uh, USB. Fortunately, there's a little door that covers those USB ports. Otherwise, I would have gotten oil inside those ports because I just had it laying on the ground as I was changing the oil. And as you can see, the oil just kind of gets all over it. So anyway, if you're interested in a trouble light, check it out. Uh, they sent this to me. I, I didn't pay for it. They just Some company sent me one to try. I don't even remember the name of the company, but I'll put it on the screen and, and put a link to it. And I think they're 20 bucks, they're real cheap. And, uh, you know, I needed a, oh, well, my bolt stuck to the magnet. That's cool. Um, anyway, if you're in the market for a trouble light and you're looking for a rechargeable LED trouble light, this would be a good one. Like I say, I think it's probably better suited for a car. It's a little big for a motorcycle. Um, but for automotive use, it's pretty good. I used it today just to test it out, and it seems to be working okay. Hey, if you liked this video, please don't forget to click that like button before you leave, and I'll see you on the next Cruise Man's Garage video.